27 minutes after 7 o'clock, you're listening to Kai Biz here on Kai 959. And of course, it is a Wednesday. This is where we talk all things to do with ecosinomics. An opportunity for us to really dig deep into the minds and souls of entrepreneurs who might be based in the township, but of course are participating in growing the economy in a phenomenal way. And tonight we talk to an individual who is changing the face of education private schooling education in our township specifically. A woman who's committed her own money, her own time, and of course has uh, unlocked amazing potential in young children to make sure that they actively participate in what is known as uh, Ayanda Junior Academy. Currently has uh, just over 250 pupils and really making a success of establishing a private school within the township. To tell us more about her experience as an entrepreneur, let's welcome our guest this evening on Ecosinomics. Ekasi Economics on Kaya Biz. And as you've heard, we have a phenomenal guest in studio. They always say it's women who can drive change. And I think this story is a clear indicator of exactly that fact. Uma Margaret Chobo joins us as the CEO of Ayanda Junior Academy, joining us this evening in studio. So, Uma Margaret. So, Uma Gugu. Uma Gugu. We're still going to Sunday. 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 We're still You have a phenomenal story, I must say. I was reading a few articles that dated back to the opening back uh, in 2017. Uh, 2019 and it's quite a journey that you've started but help us understand first things first what sparked the inspiration you know when my last born was 18 months I was looking for a good city for him I didn't find one mm-hmm. and by that time I was doing business management and I wasn't sure what kind of a business I'm going to start so after seeing that I can't find a, a a preschool for my son. Mm-hmm. It comes to my mind that let me start something different because I like so, I, I like everything to be perfect, whatever I'm doing. Yes. I like smart things, beautiful things. So I decided to start I under preschool first. Mm-hmm. I under preschool is 32 years this year. Wow. So it was easier for me to start a private school mm-hmm. because parents, they believe in us. Mm. I don't want to say in me, in us as my staff and my board members. So to start a private school, it was not such a problem. It was easier because kids from preschool, they go straight to our junior academy. Yeah. Yes. And let's talk about that because a lot of us don't think of it as a business. God, I want to go to with your studies and the business management background. You obviously saw this as a great business opportunity. So Starting that business must not have been easy. It's access to capital, it's the marketing, it's getting the right teachers on board, making sure that they're educating children correctly. How did you you navigate some of those um, backlogs? Fortunately, when I was running my preschool, I was attending a, a, a forum from Cape Town. So that forum, they empower us with many things. They introduced us to business to advisors to business oh, advisors perfect. and the auditors mm-hmm. so I learn if you run a business you must start saving mm. the money doesn't belong to you I remember one time I used to pay the fees of my son with a checkbook the auditor calls me and say Margaret what you were paying at Dominican is not part Did of the you school buy something for the school I say no but it's my money mm. and the auditor said no Money belong to the business. You must pay yourself a salary. Yes. So that's why I run everything correctly because my audit was very strict, and my advisor was very strict. Yeah. I always ask before I do something. Mama Margaret, there's a big lesson for us to learn here because a lot of young entrepreneurs do exactly that thing. business, business, and that's the mindset that we often have. And what I'm learning from you is that you often seek the counsel of advisors of supporters how critical has that been to your business growth and maybe monga advisor tina bantabasha wuti how we need to find the right people to advise us because sometimes as an entrepreneur we just believe wuti my word is what happens because the business is mine so how has having advisors worked to your benefit as i've said wuti mina i'm a good listener mm. first of all whatever you tell me i carry it with me when i was doing business management events the guy told us oh, you must be very disciplined if you're running a business mm. if you want to run a successful business as i've said 
imale business belong to the business. Yep. I use namuk for imale ma pogoten when my kids but mama sfuni ten tak but engel. But makfani kubi financial statement. The guy is going to ask me what happened to this 200 rand. Exactly. Because it's not yours. You must pay yourself a salary. I didn't understand how to pay myself a salary as my business. But he said to it's sit down with me. At Margaret, write down all your expenditure. Mm. So then I wrote them down. I said, you see, you are not making a lot of money. Pay yourself 500 rand, and this five rand will remain to the bank for 12 months. Got you. That's how I grow. Got you. Yes. That's so important. Another thing about seeking advice is that you've learned in growing your business. Would you, as you say, uh, preschool or pre-primary and then moved into a primary school that uh, now focuses on uh, uh, education. And I understand at some point registering uh, uh, with authorities was a problem. But that also speaks to lessons that you've learned in business, right? It's not a failure. It's mm. a lesson. Wutinati, as you grow, as you expand, mm. be mindful of the rules and regulations that you need to manage. Mm. Uh, how has that experience been? And I think we need to emphasize Wutinati the school is registered fully um, um, just to clarify any concerns that might exist there. Okay, dear. After I the late TV, it's called about us registering. Mm. And you know what? Sometimes, you know, money vision was stubborn mm. because I applied in 2017 before it's called a scholar. As I'm going to respond. Okay. And then I continue. Because if for me, I tell me kids do have mm. so that's why I started a school. Saran is calling a toilet, it did line later, Mabo April, and school says, Saran. What I'm going to say to the parents? No, I yeah, just can't so. quite and continue. After the TV, I say, Pepe and Gay, Azamba Sang Shroop, because Mabo registered Ganja. If I didn't, I'm going to be brave, but let me talk. Because my PA was fighting with me, 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 not registered. That is not about a band, maybe government, I born. But now it's called a Sunu register. So after that interview, I want to try to register. Yeah, bo. So we're saying it's kind of hard to come again. Don't you know, Baba Shugut? Just start, and then from there you can actually find solutions. So that's a big lesson, I think, for many of us as entrepreneurs. Mm. Um, we're going to talk about legal that I think a lot of us as entrepreneurs struggle with. Look, seven days are not enough. And you have proven that you've done that well, from the teachers to the community, to the pupils themselves. How have you navigated that journey and how, how important has that partnership been? Are you kidding? To be honest, my motto is don't be nice to me. Oh. Be honest. Okay. So now I'm, I'm honest to the parents. If I can't do a thing, I just tell them, Zali, I can't do this. Mm. So don't be nice, be honest and be humble to people. Because I started when I was 32. Mm -hmm. I was respect her from Lapo because I respect her. If you if you are not a just an ordinary person. But you are They call me Margaret the whole for slurrers. But I am a neighbor to help Abantu. And I can imagine for a private school as well, that also impacts you and your business. for a private school as well, that also impacts you and your business. This month, school fees, this, that, and the other. Uh, and that's another thing that you need to be a businesswoman. Yes, you're right, Lapo. But I'm not sure that fees. Sometimes you must be a social worker mm. and help um paga to a big malik pet. Minamang fundi peace man management, but sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. That's why if umtana umzalatang na mali, I'm accommodate until certain time. Abanya ba honest ba honest, they come back and pay malabai kolota, abanya gaba bui pat. Sabin sana num pagat and be humble to them. I want to spread. I want to stress that one. You must be humble. Mm. community. People will understand you. Everyone will So, respect I don't know why. Oh, beautiful. 
Beautiful. If you've just joined us, you're listening to Kai Biz here on Kai 959. It's 24 minutes to 8 o'clock and we are in conversation with our entrepreneur for this evening on our Ecosinomics feature, Uma Margaret Jobo, who is the CEO of Ayanda Junior Academy. Ayanda Junior Academy is essentially the first private school to be established within a township in South Africa, uh, primarily from Fosloras in the East Rand and of course, uh, documenting her journey, how she started with essentially what was an early childhood development centre, uh, then moving into a primary school and hopefully we can talk about plans to build a high school, a university. Mm? I'm busy with the high school now. How is that going? The plans and everything are in order. A school member can become my investor. I want to start by end of March when the school closes because next year I don't have a class for grade 7. Mm. So I'm in that pressure now. And oh, wow. I don't want to work under pressure. But I, I'm saying thank you because parents are supporting me. They say we've got 256 kids at under Junior Academy. Mm. So I've got 12 classes, they are all full. Mm. We've got a waiting list. So that's why I've got a pressure to start building a class for grade seven. Are you looking for partners? Would you ever franchise? Would you ever sell? I talked to my to my advisor about that but we didn't go far mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because I don't understand those things. Mm-hmm. I don't want to put myself in something that I don't understand. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Definitely. And that's so important and I appreciate the honesty because I think so many of us as entrepreneurs if I can put it that way, especially as young ones, where we want to just drive this particular journey without seeking the right kind of uh, solutions and advice. But as you've mentioned, Mam Ayand, is on it, Mam Ayand, founder of. <laughs> oh, Ayanda. Ayanda. <laughs> okay, so where does the name come from? From my son, I owe him billions. Oh, <laughs> because he, he can't start a business. They say, I and I'm a great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that makes sense. Uguti, there's a, a family tie. And, and, and the beautiful thing about this is that you're keeping it in the family. Both your sons are here, if I'm not mistaken. Or oh, one is your grandson. Grandson. Got you. Yes. But that tells us something that you're going to, that this is legacy and this is family. And maybe help us understand in building a family business, how have you gotten Uput Ayanda involved? Uh, he's supporting you. Um, but keeping the legacy going and, sus- and, and in succession planning. You know, my kids, my, especially the one that I started the preschool because of him. My yes. last point said, Mama is not our vision. It's your vision. Ulunga. <laughs> <laughs> Mama, it's your vision, it's not ours. But okay, Anda is always at school helping me there and there, and my daughter is working in a preschool. Fantastic. And my, grand, my first granddaughter is doing business, business management, and she's working at Ayanda Junior Academy. Wow. Yes. So it's, it's a cousin land. <laughs> There's no way of escaping it. Uzwil <laughs> Shan. He's also doing a business management. <laughs> oh, beautiful. We're learning a lot of lessons from you here, Mam Margaret, and I think it's so important. As you said, number one, work on your vision. Build a vision, even if it's step by step, and also see the vision evolve from an early childhood development center into a full-blown school, and also seeking counsel when you need it. Speak to people who can advise you when you need go along on the journey. And of course, uh, as you say, Involving family in order to make sure that you have support. And the one critical thing you also highlighted is being humble. Usebenzi san and umparat. Yes. If you could do all of this again or speak to a younger version of yourself, what other business advice would you share? As I've said, you mustn't be nice to people. Be honest. You must be honest. You must be humble. Mm-hmm. You must know what you are doing and you must be firm. If you say, my great art started at seven o'clock. Mm. You mustn't compromise to parents. If mm. they ask you a question, why Margaret? Because you must tell them, you must give them the reason. Don't mm-hmm. say, no, sister, I'm seven. The way I want, you must give them the reason. People, they do understand. Be honest to everybody. Whatever you are doing, be honest. Don't be nice. Be honest. Smile, Gandhi. Mm. Be nice. Be honest. Got you. What additional support do you need? Maybe there's an educator who's listening today, a preschool teacher or a primary school teacher. What support do you need that someone out there might be listening to this conversation, watching the video? What support do you need that maybe we can assist you with and we can call uh, your school soon? 
we we have a library in our school. We are trying to buy books. So it's so difficult. The shelves are still empty. We need books. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we also need a coach for cricket. Okay. Yes, we don't have a coach for a cricket. Got you. Yes. Books, coach for cricket. Those are things we can work on. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Those, those two, no? Ah, the netball. The netball. Yes. Okay. If we can get someone who helps us with the netball. I lay on something I saw, Mama. Hey, being a center in my time. But you know what, Mama? Great. Before we let you go, we have a wonderful call on the line. Who Ephraim, who has actually dialed in. I'm aware you don't have headphones, but we'll make sure you can hear this call. Ubab Ephraim is called from uh, Ekuruleni and says his daughter went to the school. Uh, Bab Ephraim, welcome to the school. Welcome to the show. Hi, ma'am. How are you, Mrs. Cook? Very well, thank uh, you, sir. Well, uh, my name is Mwegi Ephraim Siali, and my daughter started at that school, at the preschool. That was in 2007. And uh, Mama Margaret was a feeder for actually a school in Sunny Ridge, where my daughter graduated actually two years ago. She was in matric. And I'd like to, as, as much as I'm no longer living in Forsterus, but it is a good school, and I wish her all the best. And may God bless her with everything that she wants. And if I can, I would actually like to actually also like to make a donation going forward. Oh, I will man. take. <laughs> yeah. Say, say it again. What's your commitment? We're happy to hear that, Ephraim, and hold you to it. No, I, I, believe me, I'm also, I'm also willing to make a contribution towards the upkeeping of the school. Ah, oh, thank you so much. Thank really you. appreciate it. Mama Margaret, your response to Ephraim. He's on the line. <laughs> thank you, Mama. Thank you very much. Mama we nyabonga kakhulu umntwana mulisedisiyali beka beka funda umgu womfaki le Sunny Ridge. Ekumbula le Sunny Ridge. Yeah, two both actually both of them. It was the ladies of the oldest Chepang, the third one obviously he was already there, but but I'd like to say I wish you all the best of luck, and uh, believe me, ma'am, you have our support in Foster Race. Thank you so much. 100%. <laughs> Ephraim, thank you so much, sir. Really appreciate your time and your call this evening and the commitment that you've made, and all the best in um, uh, your children pursuing uh, more and more opportunities in education. Mama Margaret? And the other thing that I, I need to add. Yes, ma'am. I'm taking care of my kids. The principal of AJA is my former student. The first group I took to Sunny Ridge. Wow. And the other teacher also in grade two, Zama, is my former student. It was my first baby because I didn't take baby during those times. That's why I'm I under preschool. Yay. But the mother just dropped the baby on top of the table. I said, Mom, I'm Nanyam Seven Zidi. You'll see what to do with her. I will. So today, She's and look what you've done with her. She's one of my teachers. Beautiful. <laughs> if anything, I think your words and your actions are following through. You said, be honest with people. Don't be nice. Mm. And you said... Uh, and be humble and it's mm. translating in the call that we see it's translating in the the staff that you employ so if anything please keep going onwards and upwards we will uh, continue to solicit support for you and many others in the industry but your efforts are really appreciated and <laughs> thank you so much for your time this evening ma'am that's ma'am Margaret Chobo who is the CEO of Ayanda Junior Academy joining us today to really reflect on her journey like and times uh, and experience of having opened the first black-owned township private school in Fosloras in Ekuruleni.